In this video, we'll look at S-plane analysis of LTI systems. What we mean by this is that we can analyze the pole zero region of convergence plot of a transfer function, H of S of a system, and use it as a powerful tool for analyzing the system. In fact, the location of the poles and the region of convergence can quickly and easily tell us things like, is the system causal or acausal? And is the system stable or unstable? Before we get into the analysis, let's just do a quick review of what the transfer function H of S is. In the time domain, a system is characterized by its impulse response H of T. In other words, if we take an LTI system and put a delta function or an impulse as its input, the system will respond and spit out a function called H of T, which is the impulse response. Now in the frequency domain, or more accurately in the S plane, a system is characterized by its transfer function H of S. And the transfer function can sort of be seen as follows. If we have an LTI system, and if we put as an input a complex exponential e to the st, then the system will produce an output which has the same function e to the st, in other words, the same frequency. However, the phase and the amplitude of the output are modulated by something called h of s, which is the transfer function of the system. And it turns out, of course, that the transfer function h of s is just the Laplace transform of the impulse response, H of T. So here's the Laplace transform pair for H of T in the time domain becomes H of S in the frequency domain, which is defined by the Laplace transform integral. Okay, so let's start with our analysis and characterization of an LTI system based on its pole zero ROC plot. First of all, in the time domain, if a system is causal, then its impulse response is right-sided. So here's an example of an impulse response H of T for some system. Notice that the impulse response starts at time zero when the impulse was applied. And since the system is causal, the system's not going to respond until after the impulse is applied. So this by definition means that H of T must be right-sided. Now, the region of convergence of a right-sided signal must be a right half plane. And this is summarized in the ROC properties in the lecture notes. This happens to be ROC property number four. Thus, the transfer function H of S, which remember is the Laplace transform of H of T, must have a region of convergence, which is a right half plane. So here's a couple examples. Um, that would be causal systems. Notice in, in this example here, we have some poles plotted, but the ROC is a right half plane. In other words, it's everything to the right of this pole right here. Um, with this example over here, same thing. We have the ROC is a right half plane. It's everything to the right side of this particular pole here. Now, more specifically, what we're dealing with here are causal LTI systems that have rational transfer functions. Now, a rational transfer function means that H of S is a ratio of polynomials in S. And this is the result of systems described by linear differential equations, or LTI systems that we're dealing with. So in the general form for the transfer function H of S is notice there's a polynomial up here, uh, powers of S, S to the N, S to the N minus one, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the denominator, there's another polynomial in S, S to the M, S to the M minus one and so forth. This is what we mean by a rational transfer function. Now we can always factor this, right? It may not be easy to do, but um, we can use a computer or something to find the roots of these polynomials and break up or factor the numerator and the denominator into a bunch of factors, depending on the order of these two polynomials. Once we have those factors with their roots B1, B2, A1, A2, and so forth, we could, again, in theory, perform partial fraction expansion and decompose this transfer function into a bunch of single terms like are shown right here. Now, remember that this system is causal. 
So that means each of these terms that we decomposed the transfer function into must also be causal, meaning that they're all right-sided functions and they must all have right half-plane regions of convergence. So for example, this first term here has a pole where S is equal to A1. So let's just say the pole happened to be right here. So we know that the region of convergence just for this term, in order for it to be causal, has to be a right half plane. So everything to the right of the pole is shaded. Likewise, for the second term, the uh, A2 term, we have a pole at A2. Let's just say the, this pole happened to be right here on the uh, real axis. Again, if this term is going to be causal, um, it must be right-sided and therefore we must have a right half plane for the region of convergence and so on and so on. We can do the same thing for the third term. It might have a pole over here, but all we know is that the region of convergence would have to be to the right of that pole. Now remember, the region of convergence for the whole transfer function has to be the intersection of these individual regions of convergence. So what that means is that the total transfer function of this, uh, I'm sorry, the total region of convergence for the transfer function must be to the right of the rightmost pole, because that's what happens when we take the intersection of all these. So we come up with a rule here um, that's very handy and important. If a system with a rational transfer function has its region of convergence to the right of the rightmost pole, the system is causal, all right? And this would be an example of that. Now let's turn to stability. Going back to chapter two, a system is stable if a small input produces a non-diverging output. A system is stable if its impulse response is absolutely integrable, meaning h of t is finite and decays with time. So here's an example, um, this red curve here for an impulse response. This would be an example of an unstable system where the impulse response diverges or blows up with time. On the other hand, this blue curve here would be an example of a system that is stable because its impulse response um, is well behaved and decays with time. Now, if H of t, the impulse response, does not di diverge, then the Fourier transform of H of t will converge. All right, so this is, you know, going back to chapter four, this is the Fourier transform integral. Um, this part here, the complex exponential, is just an oscillating portion. But what we have to kind of focus on here is h of t is, is part of the integrand here. And if this is finite and decaying with time, like the blue curve here, then this integral is well behaved and we can evaluate it. In other words, the integral converges. Another way of saying this is that the Fourier transform, h of j omega, exists. So a stable system has a valid frequency response. H of j omega exists. Now, remember that the Fourier transform, H of j omega, is the same as H of s, the transfer function, for the special case where s is equal to j omega. In other words, sigma is equal to zero. So in order for this to exist, now this, remember, s equals j omega, that's the j omega axis. So a, the region of convergence must include the j omega axis if the Fourier transform exists. All right, so that was a lot of words. Putting it all together, here's a summary. An LTI system is stable if and only if the region of convergence of the transfer function, h of s, includes the j omega axis. So let's look at three examples. You look at this um, picture here, the region of convergence is this shaded region. We can immediately see that the j omega axis is inside the region of convergence, therefore the system is stable. Here's another example of a stable system. Notice this time again, the j omega axis is inside the region of convergence. And then in this third example, notice the region of convergence is over here and does not include the j omega axis. This means this particular system is unstable. In other words, it's a very quick and simple test to look for stability. 
Okay, so we can summarize this with a set of simple rules here. The pole region of convergence plot tells us if the simple if the system is stable or causal. So here are the rules. The first one, if a system with a rational transfer function has its region of convergence to the right of the rightmost pole, then the system is causal. Rule number two, a system is stable if the region of convergence includes the j omega axis. And we can sort of combine these two together to come up with this conclusion. A causal system is stable if and only if the poles of the transfer function are in the left half plane of the S plane. All right, so let's look at four examples to help clarify this. So look at this first example here. All right, first of all, we see that the region of convergence is to the right of the rightmost pole. Here's the rightmost pole right here out of these three poles. And so since it's the ROC is to the right, we know it's causal. The ROC also includes the J omega axis right here. Therefore, it's stable. So this is a causal and stable system. Let's look at this example here. We've got three poles right along here. Again, the ROC is to the right of the rightmost pole, meaning the system is causal. However, the J omega axis is not included inside the ROC, so therefore this system is causal and unstable. Look at this example down here. We've got two poles. This time, the ROC is to the left of the leftmost pole. This means the system is not causal, it is acausal. However, the ROC does include the J omega axis, which means it is stable. Last example, we've got three poles plotted like this. We see that the ROC is to the left of the leftmost pole. That means it's acausal. And we also see that the J omega axis is not inside of the ROC. That means it's unstable. Let's finish up with one more example. Suppose we're told that a causal system has the following transfer function. H of s equals s plus 2 over s squared plus 3s minus 4. Is the system stable? All right, so how do we figure this out? Well, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to factor our transfer function. So we can factor H of s. Um, the top is going to remain the same, s plus 2. But the bottom, just by uh, trial and error here, we can see factors to s plus 4 times s minus 1. From here, we can find the poles and zeros of h of s and plot them down here. So we notice the numerator has a zero at s equals negative two. So we can plot that right here. And the denominator tells us we have a pole at s equals minus four for this term. That's plotted right here. And this s minus one gives us a pole at s equal positive one, which is plotted over here. Now, the next step, we're told that the system is causal, right? We were given that up here in the uh, statement up here. So we know that the region of convergence must be to the right of the rightmost pole, right? That's one of our rules. So we've got two poles. This is the rightmost pole over here. So we shade everything to the right of that pole. Now, by looking at this plot, obviously the ROC does not include the J omega axis, and that is our test for stability. So since ROC does not include the J omega axis, we can conclude that the system is not stable.